the entire stadium is going to be screaming for every play like that to be reviewed. For the booth to buzz down, let's take another look at it. Think about the number of plays that we could have in the last two minutes of a first half, and oh my God, with the game on the line, the last two minutes of the game, where all of a sudden, before you run the next play, the replay booth is going to have to buzz down to see if maybe someone grazed a wide receiver just a shade too early, and now it may be in this era of looking for things to overturn rather than only using replay to overturn the most egregious things, looking for things to overturn, that you may get constant stoppages in the last two minutes of each half because of potential game-changing plays. There's no penalty in all of football that more greatly alters the outcome or can than pass interference. It's the only penalty in football that can be over 15 yards, right? What other penalty in football could be a 30, 40, 50 yard penalty? Hail Marys might have to go to the replay booth just to see if maybe a defensive back on a jump ball grazed a guy a little early, altered his ability to get to the ball. Now all of a sudden you get the ball at the one yard line. Because if you slow it down on super slow-mo instant replay and you see even a hint of a non-flag thrown pass interference and now you've got the ability to change that call, you really don't have an excuse not to. I think it's terrible. And I would have been right there with the Bengals voting against it. When you start to go to replay on calls that are judgment calls, you start to bring much more of a human out. This is no longer did he break the plane or not? Did he step out of bounds or not? Did he catch it or not? The black and white line calls that have to do with, you know, you're supposed to be able to see, like, without a doubt evidence that you got the call right or wrong. This is now a judgment call. How many times are you watching a game where you see a play that you would call pass interference that the guy on the field didn't? Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Stephen A. Smith Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Live. And you can always get in touch with the show through the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed. Welcome back to Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Stephen A. Smith Show is being brought to you by Credit Karma. Get your truly free credit scores and free credit monitoring from Credit Karma today. That's Credit Karma. Get knowing. Plus, ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. ESPN Radio presented by Progressive Insurance. Drivers who switch to Progressive can save an average of $668. Back to the phones we go at 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. Mike, talk to me. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, man? Hey, Stephen A. I've talk been watching you. you for years, man. I just want to say you're the best sports analysis there are. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Go ahead. I have been a Yankee fan for 50 years. Mm-hmm. I want to know what the chances are that we may get Madison Bumgarner. And do you think he'd be a good fit? I don't know the answer to that question, uh, to be quite honest with you. Um, I don't even know if Madison Bumgarner is on their radar. Obviously, the brother can play. We all know what uh, Bumgarner brings to the table. There's no doubt about that. Um, he's a champion, and he was a closer. Kansas City Royals, I'll never forget how he just walked up in there in Game 7 and just shut them down. Just shut right. them completely down. Um, I'd love for them to have somebody like that. The question is, is that um, do they really, really need him? You got to look at the Yankees for what it is, uh, whether it's this kid Paxson, when Severino comes back, CeCe Sabathis, all this stuff. They're not really a team that's really uh, a reliant on their rotation. Your rotation comes into the game, they pitch about four innings or so, and then after that you can give it to the relief pitchers because their bullpen is so strong. And so when, you look, at it from, so when you look at it from that perspective, the need for Bum Garner – doesn't appear to be as flagrant as one would imagine. Now, I will say this. When Boston has Sale and Houston has Verlander, I'd want my own version of one of those guys. Right. You see what I'm saying? So in that regard, I get you. Uh, But the flip side to it is that it's clearly one of those situations where the Yankees think it's going to come down to their bullpen and their bats. And because of that, I don't know if Bumgarner is going to fit into that equation. Okay, my friend. Well, I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Nick. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Nick? Talk to me. Hey. Hey, Stephen A. How are you? 
I'm uh, 16. I said, how are you? I didn't say, how oh, old are you? I'm I good, said, I'm how good. are you? I'm good, I'm good. Go ahead, I'm, man. I'm a big LSU fan, and I really feel like they can beat Michigan State. I'm trying to figure out what do you think, how they match up against Duke. How who matches up against Duke, buddy? LSU. I don't know. I haven't really watched them much this year. I watched them. I watched them uh, in the SEC tournament. Uh, I forgot which other game I saw them. I think it was early in the season against Kentucky. I'm not. I'm not equipped to tell you about what I think about LSU. I really, really am not. I haven't seen. I've seen a lot of Duke. I've seen a little bit of Kentucky. I've seen two of the three Michigan, Michigan State games. I've seen that kind of stuff. But I haven't really, really watched LSU to give you an informed position about them. I can tell you that their record is impressive. You're 28 and six. I got to pay attention to you. You're right. You win the SEC. I got to be not the SEC uh, conference tournament because you didn't do that. But you play, you win 16 games in the SEC division. I got to pay attention to you. I'm looking at Waters. I'm looking at Reed and these boys. I got to pay attention to that because I'm looking at it for what it is. Uh, Nas, Reed, Waters, Mays. Yeah, I don't know much about them, though. So I don't want to sit up there and say that. I, I just can't. I can't intelligently speak to about a team that I really, really haven't seen. And I haven't been watching LSU that much, to be honest with you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Appreciate the call. Though. Thank you so much. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. I ain't going to lie. Listen, this college basketball. Anybody that, that sits up there and tells you they've seen every damn team, they're lying. They're, they're lying. Except, of course, the phenomenal game day crew that we have. They watch everything, okay, because all they watch is college basketball. Me, when I'm watching every sport, I, I forgive me if LSU wasn't on my radar before recently. Again, I watched them. And I've seen them, and I've seen them this year, only twice, though. So I really, really can't tell you, you know, what I think that they can do, all right? I watched them lose to Florida in overtime, too. I did see that. I did see that. But then they turn around and beat Texas A&M, they beat Alabama. They beat Florida by one. And the SEC, then you got, you got Vanderbilt before they lost to Florida. I watched the game where they lost to Florida. I'm sorry, not the early game where they won. I watched when they lost to Florida on March 15th. When that kid hit the, the, the three uh, for, from the key for Florida, I watched that game. LSU's good. I just don't know. Michael, you live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Yeah, I was calling uh, about the MVP race, and I'm not necessarily saying that I would put Russell Westbrook in for a candidate but just how little he's being talked about in the fact that it may be a third straight season recording a triple double. Okay. Well, first of all, first of all, stop, 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 stop. Is Russell Westbrook, did Russell Westbrook win a league MVP before? Yes, correct. Has Russell Westbrook been putting up triple doubles like it's going out of style over the last three years? Uh, I'm sorry? Has he been putting up triple doubles like they're going out of style the last three years? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, was he not an MVP candidate last year? Yes. What do you want us to say? You want us to well, give him you want, to, you, want to, you want us to give him a massage and a pedicure too? No, it just seems like it's just not being, I mean. I'll you know, tell you why. I'll, I'll tell you why we're not talking about Russell Westbrook that much. Because the expectations have become loftier. That's why. They're 44 and 31. Once upon a time, we were looking at this team. I had the Oklahoma City Thunder. First of all, Paul George might have a lot to do with the fact that Russell Westbrook hasn't been talked about either. Because before Paul George was, had gone down, if you remember, it was a three-horse race for the league MVP honors between him, Giannis, and James Harden. And then he went down, and then, ha and then Harden and Giannis were doing their thing. And then after that, Paul George came back, but he was still struggling. Secondly, and more importantly, they've been losing more games. They recently had a four-game losing streak. And they've lost five of their last seven. And so when you look at it from that perspective, and now you fall into the eighth slot in a, in a, in a Western Conference, you're not going to be a part of the MVP discussion, sir. It's not going to happen. Correct. And that's, and that's why I said I don't necessarily know that I put him in the MVP race. It just seems like it's just not being talked about in historical significance as much as Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying. The rules have changed, and he's been doing it, and we know how great he is. And you just get tired. That's like us not talking about Steph Curry shooting enough. Steph Curry dropped. Steph Curry will drop 28 points and hit five threes. And we'll barely mention anything. You know why? Because it's become that normal. It's become that normal. When you're that great, people can take it for granted. 
And when it comes to triple doubles, that could easily be applicable to Russell Westbrook. That would be my explanation. All oh, right? I appreciate it. Thank appreciate you it, time. man. Thank you so much. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. You're listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. By the way, as the new season gets underway, the TuneIn app has every baseball fan covered from opening day to the World Series. Listen to your favorite team with live calls for every Major League Baseball game with TuneIn Premium. You're all in one audio app. TuneIn brings together not only MLB coverage, but other live sports, music, news, and podcasts, including all of your favorite ESPN radio podcasts. You know, like the Stephen A. Smith Show. So download the TuneIn app and begin your free 30-day trial of TuneIn Premium today. Your calls to close out the show in a minute. Brought to you by the Wendy's new Biggie Bag. Price and participation may vary. 